Hello again everybody, this is Alex Gorbunov and I've got another video demonstration for you. And in this video demonstration, we are going to model this wonderful light fixture manufactured by a company called Pottery Barn. And you can go to their website www.potterybarn.com and look for additional information about this object. It's called Olivia Star. And, you know, since this is a real life object and it's sold online or in the retail stores, there is a big chance that one of your clients will eventually order it from you for one of his interior projects. So I want to make sure that when you receive a task like that, you'll be able to model this object in no time. And I also hope that you will learn a couple more advanced modeling techniques and maybe a couple tricks. So let's go ahead and get started. Take another look at the reference image and memorize what that object looks like and go to 3D Studio Max window. So here you can see we've got clean interface and we can start working in the perspective view, maximizing it and hiding home grid because we don't need that. Now go to command panel, objects menu and create a simple cylinder. Right now we don't care about the size and diameter of the cylinder. So just basically click mouse button and drag it around and create any cylinder object. And later on, we're going to adjust its radius and size. And you know what? I never mentioned it in the previous couple video demonstration, but let's hide these selection brackets represented by these white lines by pushing J button on your keyboard, because this is something we don't really need in our workflow. So now for the next step, we can go ahead and change couple parameters of this cylinder object. Let's set radius to 30.0. And I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that we are working in generic units. So let's go ahead and make sure that unit system is set to generic units. It's not inches or meters. It's just the simple numbers. So make sure it's generic units and click OK. Now let's go back to cylinder parameters and change couple other numbers. Change number of height segments to three and change number of sides to eight. So object will look like this. And also let's adjust the height of the object so that each of these individual polygons on each side of the cylinder looks as close as possible to square. So obviously it will be real hard to catch exact square shape, but just do your best. And I think we already have a decent result. So let's just make sure we all using the same number. And for this particular case, let's set it to 65. Now we can convert this object into editable poly by clicking right mouse button and choosing convert to editable poly from the menu. And now you can push F4 on your keyboard and that will hide wireframe while still being in a shaded view mode. And here you can see that this object still retains the smoothing groups information from the cylinder object. So let's clear that out and go to polygon sub mode, push control A on the keyboard to select all polygons. And here in the command panel, you can see this rollout called polygon smoothing groups. So you can control all the smoothing information of this object here. So push this clear all button and that will remove all the smoothing groups from this object. Now we can push F4 to bring back wireframe. And now we can go to edge sub mode and we need to select every other edge here at the top of the object. And then we need to select opposite edges here at the bottom of the object. And then we want to scale these edges down with the standard scale tool. So just click this scale button and start scaling these edges down until their size infinitely small. So that the polygons at the top and at the bottom of this object appears to look like a large square. But now, even though the size of the edge is infinitely small, it is still the edge, so there are two vertices attached to each of them. So let's go to vertex sub mode and weld all those, all those vertices. 
So select all vertices by pushing Ctrl A on the keyboard, bring up this welding parameters dialog window and start increasing this threshold number until you see that all those really close to each other vertices are welded. And as always you can see that the number of vertices before and after has changed. So that's pretty much what we want. And click OK. Now we need to go to polygon sub mode and select those large square polygons at the top and at the bottom of the object. And then we need to scale them down using the scale tool. So just go ahead and select scale tool and start scaling these polygons down until their size is as close as possible to those other square polygons at the center of the object. Now we need to convert selection of these polygons into selection of vertices attached to them. So here you can see if I just simply try to switch to vertex sub mode, I still see this old selection of vertices. But if I go back to polygon sub mode and try to switch to vertex sub mode while holding control button on a keyboard, I will convert the selection of polygons into selection of vertices attached to those polygons. Now we need to move these selected vertices closer towards the center of the object. And by doing that, we will adjust the size of all other four-sided polygons of this object to the square. So here is the trick how to do this. We are going to scale the selection of vertices down along Z axis and that will move them. So here you can see me scaling them down and they move closer towards the center of the object. And now you can see that the shape of all four-sided polygons of this object is square. Now go back to polygon sub mode and select all polygons by as usually pushing Ctrl A on the keyboard. And now we, we need to unselect the triangles here at the top and here at the bottom of the object. Then to this remaining selection of polygons, we are going to apply this tool called Bevel. So go ahead and click this small button next to it. And that brings up the Bevel Polygons dialog window. So here set Bevel type to by polygon. That will make sure that we bevel each of these polygons individually. And now we need to decrease the outline amount so that the size of these selected polygons is infinitely small. So keep decreasing it until the result that you can see on your screen is similar to the result that you can see on my screen. That looks good. So now we can increase the height until these four-sided pyramid looking objects looks close to, to what you see on the reference image here. So I think the best value for the height to make this object look as close as possible to the reference object would be 28. Now, if I try to zoom in and see the closer view of one of these spikes here at the end, you can see that the vertices over there are not welded. And that's happening on the ends of each of these pyramid looking spikes. So we need to fix that. And the way we fix that is usual. We just go to vertex sub mode and select all vertices by pushing control A. And then we bring up this dialog window and then we start increasing weld threshold until you can see that the all vertices located within this weld threshold distance are welded. And you can tell that by seeing the difference in number of vertices before and after. And in our cases, 96 before and 42 after. So that's pretty much what we want. So click OK.